Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of me, myself, and I'm Joey G, bad bussy on IG, whatever the fuck you want to call me at this point, as long as you stream, support, and stream and support our excellent next guest, Mickey motherfucking Blanco. <laughs> Hi guys. Welcome. <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you for coming, first of all, too. Thank you so much for having me, Joey. Yeah, of course. I've seen that you've been opening up for Florence and the Machine. Yeah, lately. yeah. We did we did two weeks with Florence, mm -hmm. and then uh, a part of that two weeks, we got asked to do one of her sold out nights at Madison Square Garden. So it's kind of funny because after the experience, um, I would say this: I had never. I I, I have done large, you know large audiences for festivals, you yeah. know? Um, but I have never done arenas. And, you know, with Florence, every single show was an arena. Yeah. So people have asked, they've been like, oh, you know, were you nervous? Were you excited for Madison Square Garden? And the truth of the matter is, I don't, I always, you know, I kind of lie. I say, yeah, I was. <laughs> but in truth... What? And in truth, we had started, we had already, we had, in truth, we had already done five arenas with her. Mm -hmm. So we were very comfortable at that point. And um, I kind of think MSG is a little overhyped. And not, 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 not the history, not the prestige, mm -hmm. not what it means for your career. For sure. But as a venue, I think that we were at better venues. I, <laughs> I think agree. we were at better arenas. <laughs> I agree 100%. But MSG was really good. I'm not going to shit talk MSG. No, yeah, yeah. You're you're being, uh, you're being, what is it called? Being like, honest. Constructive. Yeah, and you're being honest. And I mean, you also have been doing this for a minute now. So you know what you're talking about too. It's not like some random podcaster you know, is like talking shit about a venue or anything. This is actually true. I do know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, you fully do know what the fuck you're talking about. You are... Not only an artist, a performer, but with being an artist and a performer, you're a producer, essentially, you're an engineer. Like, you know how this shit works, so. I do know how to curate an event, yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you probably, you know how to spot, like, this is clapped and this is fierce. Like, I think Barclays in Brooklyn is a fierce venue. A I've lot of people been. don't think so. I've never been. Barclays is great. They have, like, one of the hockey teams play over there. I'm not, I don't have the answer to who, nor hockey do I really. players are hot. They are. But I've never watched that sport in my life. I have watched videos of them fighting. They beat the shit out of each other. No, yeah, they really do. And see, hockey's like weird because it's kind of always like been hailed as like a white person sport, which it is, but like- Intrinsically white, I think. <laughs> definitely, it's 100% a white person sport, but I've been to a hockey game before because I'm from DC originally. And so the only sports team I guess we have that's actually somewhat decent is our hockey team. And so I've been to the games and it, they're quite entertaining because there's always music playing. They're always sliding around on the cold <laughs> floor of theirs. And they're always sliding fighting. around this way and that. Just, and I'm like, I don't even know which one is which, but there's always uh, music and there's always just fucking fighting. And I'm like, you know what? I kind of like this. A good, a nice trade sport. Yeah, exactly. This is cute. Whereas like football and all those other sports, I've only been at like one football game and never again. There's mm. so much fucking pausing in the middle. And I'm like, we have mm. to reposition and do this just so y'all could have your asses in each other's faces again mm. to do a throw ball around. But <laughs> any fucking ways, we're not talking about sports on this day. <laughs> we're, yeah, we are we're, not talking about sports we started right off, here. We, we've started off on a very, on a very trade tip. <laughs> yeah, right? Went from Florence and the Machine football to football. Football season actually just began, though. I, I, I know this because I saw men screaming <laughs> on Sunday at, outside of my hotel. Oh, so. okay. Like passing by some bar. Yeah, and I was like, why are these like men that? screaming? And I was like, oh, football season has begun. No, yeah. <laughs> I won't be at a bar screaming unless if I'm like drunk or watching Drag Race or both. I really want to get back into Drag Race. Yeah. Because I was such a dedicated... Well, first of all, the show has been on forever. So, like, I feel like if you fall off, it's okay. It's okay. But, but like, I was such a dedicated racer for mm -hmm. many years. And I've fallen off now. And, like, you know, uh, it's like the other day someone had played me this song by Willow Pill, one of the recent queens yes. that, that ran. That, that one. That one. And I thought... This is actually a very good song. It was like, the I Hate Everyone. Yes. 
fierce. And that song is bad. It's so I fucking was like, sick. This song, I would put this on a playlist for it's sure. Um, so I want to. I want to get back in. Anyway, I want to get back in. No, but. yeah. <laughs> Drag Race is everything, and that song is everything. I think like Willow performed that. At is the there a season this fall? Is, is there? Yeah, season fifteen. They filmed it over the summer, and it should be premiering sometime in it's the winter. It's crazy because at this point, it's like Drag Race is kind of up there with like Jeopardy yeah. or like Wheel of Fortune. Like it, it'll. I feel like it will, and I feel like RuPaul. That's the point. It'll always It'll be on. It'll always go on. I wonder if Ru's gonna be there the whole time, or if Ru at one point is gonna appoint the crown to another person and be like, "Girl, you got this." I'm gonna be in Palm Springs. I, th you know what's funny? Of, I mean, I think Bob would be a wonderful Drag Race host. I, agree. I think Monet would knock it out of the, out of the water. Way. Yep. As someone to take over for Rue. Yeah. I think Bob or Mon I'm Monet. I agree. Those I think Monet, maybe. Monet would, like, knock it out of the fucking water. And Rue loves Monet as well. Like, she's on the uh, Celebrity Drag Race, that new season of it. The one thing, though, and it, and it really embodies who Rue is, there, there is a certain... There is a... But there is, I think, there is a certain... And I, I hate to sound like a snob. Well... Mm -hmm. I am a bit of a snob, so it's, it's true. But <laughs> what's your sign? But <laughs> I'm an I'm an Aries with a Leo rising Sexy. and a Capricorn moon. Love it. Okay. But my Venus is in Taurus. Same. Um, but I do think that there is a certain taste level that I've seen that only Rue has. I agree. And a certain all around kind of like taste maker. I mean. RuPaul is RuPaul because they also have an insane, an insane amount of star quality. Right. Um, and that checks a lot of boxes. And mm -hmm. so I, I don't know if I've ever seen another queen really embody all of those qualities. Yeah. You know, there's only one Ru. Yeah, it's like that moment when Ru has like her runway walk before like the judging starts. Like when that scene is set and you see Ru pump down the runway, you're just like, oh my God. There's yeah. only one. Yeah. There's only one. But Bob would be an excellent follow-up host of the show. Bob's my favorite drag race girl, drag queen of all time. I love Bob. If she wasn't so mean, I would all around love Alyssa Edwards. Cause she's Alyssa so fucking, would be great she's too. She's so fucking funny. Alyssa would be great but too. She would just literally like, but that's what I'm saying. But there's a, but there's a, but there's a, there's a little lack of class. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and that's the thing. Like we love Rue because Rue is, uh, Rue's all about, you know, like being in touch with your inner child. Rue knows how to have those talks. Like, you know, the fucking workroom talks where she'll casually bring up like your most horrible childhood trauma casually, like while talking about your garment, you're just like, Oh yeah, that one time my brother pulled out a knife on me. Still, I don't know why the girls still cry. I'm like, in that moment, you, would, I wouldn't, I, I, I don't. Know, the girls still, the girls get, and maybe it is it the, up. yeah. I guess you, you're playing. I guess I it, there's a lot going on. Up. You're in it. You're emotionally in the early mornings, probably. Well, I, you know what? I forget. I forget you win money, yeah. and that, and that, and that, and that, and it's cute money. It's cute money, especially How much now. Is it again? It's a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, that's cute. That's that's that. You play that. You play that. That's you play cute. that amount right. That's really cute money. Even after taxes, for a few like years, seventy thousand shit for a month of work. I'll put it all in. You invest that right, you can have some cute, a cute lifestyle change. I'm, I would, I would go in. I would go in if I were to be on Drag Race. But <laughs> aside from Drag Race and those girls, we love them. By the way, another host before we move on, Kevin Aviance would be amazing. Oh, someone who hasn't been on Drag Race, like if they're at a point, even like a guest, judge, a team, a team. You know, uh, well, and that's the thing. I mean, I like a team, like how Rue has Michelle. I mean, you know, yes. it would have to be a whole new team, and you know, and uh, obviously maybe Michelle would stay. Yeah, completely. the Doyon. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> the one that, original the Doyon. member. <laughs> yep, to keep the girls in line. But going back to the venue and everything, <laughs> what's been your favorite venue or your favorite show to perform at? Just in general. Yeah. In general. In general. In general, or one that stands out to you, or of this recent tour. Um, now that you've been in arenas of like my lately. of my okay of my career, mm -hmm. I think when I opened for Bjork, I opened for yeah. Bjork twice. Um, was it Biophilia? Was the album? I forget. It I believe two, it was, was. two thousand and thirteen or something, mm -hmm. or fourteen. I mean, that was really transformative, just because like I am a Bjork stan. Yeah. Like I followed this meme account, which is like the Bjork, the, the Bjork vault of dank memes. Yep. Um, 
I Dance from the Dark changed my life. I mean, you know, I, I the out the Bjork album that I came of age to was Vespertine. Yep. And then after Vespertine, I discovered that I was like what 13, 14. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I discovered her other albums. I mean, when her other albums came out, I was like six. Yeah. Um that's just like for me, the Madonna, even though I knew Madonna, everyone knows Madonna, the Madonna album that I discovered was music. You know, that because that was that was the age that I was when mm-hmm. it came out. Anyway. Um I would say those concerts because not only was it just a wonderful experience with literally one of my idols, yeah. and it was at the very beginning of my career. Um, the first time I heard her sing, I I started crying really? because Aww. her voice is so powerful. I I always tell people, uh, for me, Bjork's voice is on par with uh, with 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 Beyonce. Yeah, like literally, like that trans, like like like. If I, like if Beyonce were in this room and to start singing, I'd probably start crying because it's like there's so many, so, so many emotions, many yeah. emotions. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Definitely. High. I mean, you know, mostly highs, but yeah, so many. You know, and like with Bjork, I just thought it, that, that that moment of hearing her and it's so strong and it's so and it's not like any other voice you've ever heard. Yeah. Um, when I was just um at her concert that she had in L.A. last year. Mm-hmm. I told my friends as a joke, I said, watch I cry through this entire concert. Aww, Girl, I cried. It was Aww, embarrassing. Yeah. I cried through the entire Fuck it. concert. And it was like, honestly, it was like releasing emotional blockages throughout the whole pandemic. 100%. Like, I cried the boots down. down. <laughs> yeah. Um, And then I think, you know what? That question is so hard for me to answer because- mm-hmm. A lot of very, I would say, coddled musicians, or I would say more on the pop side, mm-hmm. don't really like to tour. Right. And whenever someone says that to me, I'm like, you don't like to like connect with your audience and travel. And, yeah. But, you know, different girls have different gigs. And <laughs> right. I, I am someone who, the reason why we're doing this interview, the reason why you know who I am mm-hmm. is because... Of my live show is because of exactly is because of my touring because you know when I first started my career just ten years ago the world was a very different place mm-hmm. um, way less tolerant everything that I was doing at that time was seen as taboo um, unlike you know and and when I say this I always I'm always really careful about how I say it because I'm not trying to sound like a hater but it's just reality mm-hmm. unlike artists like. You know, and I think these artists are, are actually musical genius. Like, I think Frank Ocean is a musical genius. Yeah. I think Lil Nas is a musical genius. But unlike these artists, both of them were closeted when they came out. And and both of them, you know, gained their notoriety with hit songs, but being closeted artists. And then came out. And then came shortly out. Shortly after the hit. Whereas, yeah. you know, whereas myself and kind of other artists in a similar vein, we were, we were always open. So we we always face the opposition, you know what I mean? Yeah. We 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 never slid in anywhere. <laughs> and yeah. and so um I'm the point of what I'm saying this mm-hmm. is because you know, not having a record label till extremely later in my career now. Right. Um being an independent artist, I had to take a really traditional route, yeah. which was that rock and roll, Elvis Presley, Sam Cooke, The Supremes, Motown you're going to get on the road and you're going to do as many shows as possible yep. and you're and you're going to make as many fans as possible. Placement, put yourself everywhere. And then, you know, I was aided in that by the birth of Tumblr, by yeah. the birth, you know, not the birth, but... Um, no, but, but by, you were by, a Tumblr girl. That's where yeah. I discovered you on was Tumblr. Yeah, but like the birth of Tumblr. Um, you know, Instagram mm-hmm. in its early stages. Twitter, you know, uh, Facebook at one point. And, and so, you know, it enabled me to to gain notoriety and yeah. and I put always so much emphasis on my live show so it's kind of so, so when someone asks me you know they 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 I have toured so much and I and now I'm 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 actually back on that circuit yeah, you know exactly. I'm I'm back out there I've been on tour since April mm-hmm. um you know I'm taking a break now but um yeah I've been I've been doing performances it was a long festival season and it's you know I'm just I'm I'm just that girl. <laughs> that girl. That touring girl. That touring Which girl. Which is good because like what you're saying, a lot of artists don't or they have a very love-hate relationship. They'll be in love with touring the first few weeks and then halfway through they start to wean out of it. Then they're like, okay, let's let this thing end and whatnot. But I think touring, let alone performing live, is like the most intimate experience with well, your art. And it takes, you know, when I see artists, especially young artists, mm-hmm. have to cancel tours or cancel dates because of exhaustion. 
I, I always think, okay, you know, it's good that they're doing this because it's it, it takes a while to master it. Yeah. You really have to treat yourself like you're an athlete. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, and I, I've definitely gotten to a place where I pamper myself now. Like, honey, yeah, like every other city, yeah, I'm finding like I'm, I'm doing I'm doing a vitamin B12 shot. Exactly. I'm doing the vitamin IV therapy. Yeah. Like it's like, you know, I'm I'm it's weird because I actually I lost a bunch of weight this spring, this spring and gained a bunch of weight this summer. But somebody just told me that. You should always try to lose as much weight in the in the winter, fall, and spring because in the summer you're gonna gain weight because you're on vacation. Okay, I and, guess that makes and, sense. Yeah, and I found that to be true. Anyway, <laughs> no, I I'm the same type. I'll <laughs> I'll get like so snatched during the winter because I'm sad working work out that or working and work out. Whereas the summer, like there's parties and everything, right? And, and I'm start so, and then you start feeling cute, and then you're like, and then oh. I'm like, oh my swim trunks are a little too tight now yeah girl i had lost all this weight in like march april and may and then in june and july gained it all back well i went to greece and italy and you don't those are two places where Where you go and eat you eat yeah like you swim but you eat exactly what's sexy is that like the italian guys that i that i was hooking up with they also ate they looked great but like they all had they looked great but they all had well no they all had a little tiny bit of a belly but that was sexy. That's very Euro, I feel. Like, that's the thing. Like, they'll all be built, but they'll have, like, that little belly maybe from just, like, wine consumption, and something like they, that. They, and they will eat. And how we don't eat bread, they will eat so much bread Ugh. all the time. How is the dick over there? Oh, honey, the dick is very heavy. Really? It I, seems like it. I don't know why some, I don't know I why do some people think that men from certain countries don't have big penises because they do. There's big dick <laughs> everywhere. You know where I just was, where I was surprised the dicks were so big? Where? I was just in Austria and like everyone, oh. had, a, like, everyone had a big dick. Okay, I could kind of see that. I like, mean like... Everyone. I was like... And like big, big, like everyone. Yeah, not even just like <laughs> straight people big, where like someone, no, some like straight person celebs all was a leak in your swinging. Door. It was oh, crazy. swinging. It was actually nuts. Cut or uncut? Uh, I'm mo- mostly uncut. Yeah, but then, but then I realized that Austria is like the gateway <laughs> to Eastern Europe. But then there's also this German thing going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's like, they were huge. <laughs> That's what I was thinking because a lot of those like Czech Hunter videos and shit like that. I don't know if that counts as like Austrian, but like Eastern Europe, let alone they're yeah. swinging too. And I'm like, you're like 40 pounds. Where the fuck? Like, where the fuck did that shit come from? I'm very invested. <laughs> I'm very invested. As I would you book can tell. a trip to Vienna. I I definitely need to and go off. I need to. I need a European getaway. Just a full on fucking Euro trip, full of fucking. <laughs> it sounds lovely. What were you doing over in um Greece and Italy? Just vacation? Just on holiday. Yeah, I was just on just on holiday. Love. Does going on holiday affect your art positively? Or is it more so like you actually take a pause and an escape away from it and you revisit so after vacation? Italy was Italy, we actually were booked for a festival. Mm-hmm. And it was at the basin of the second largest volcano on earth, Mount Etna. Okay, yeah. And it was a beautiful festival. Mm-hmm. I mean, the uh, I, let me put it let me like put it like this. The organizers curated it in such a wonderful way. We played in like a Greek style theater, so it was yeah. a proscenium. So the so uh, the 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 seats, the bleachers, the stone yeah. seats were uh, in a concave, and you sat. You know, they Oof. started high, and then the stage was low. Oh, and so in the middle of this like Greek style theater, they actually had dumped like tons of the black volcanic sand. All around the stage, and then actually had placed the volcanic, like large volcanic rocks, uh-huh. and then they had this huge video screen to make it seem as if we were performing inside of the volcano. Like the curation was That's like fierce. no, the curation so was. I, I, I can show you the, the the curation was nuts. Um, and so that that and then I, and then you know, we had some off days, so that yeah. was a holiday. Greece, I was supposed to go to Greece. I was I, so I went with so I went with two of my friends from Switzerland, and. I thought, like, some people from New York were coming. I thought, like, four or five people from New York were coming. Yeah. It ended up being, like, I don't want to say a nightmare. It was fun. But, like, it ended up feeling like I was on a college trip. Ugh. 17 people from New York showed up. 
17 people. That you all knew well. People that I didn't particularly want to see. Mm. And like, it was good to actually take us out of our element. There was a positive side where like certain beef was squashed, but Mm -hmm. also new beef was ignited. And like, there were a couple of unfollows that happened. And then a couple of apologies that just happened literally like three days ago. So I- Not a juicy vacation. I don't, I, so I, so that wasn't really honestly that like I I didn't come away from that trip feeling rested at all. I enjoyed it, but it was like fuck this trip. Mm. I then went after working a, bit, a bunch more to Morocco, and that was vacation. Ugh, I want to go. I tagged so along. La- I had some friends that allowed me to tag along. La- so I had a really good friend actually, um, who was already going on a trip with mm. two couples, and he was by himself. And it's so funny because like. He and there were two straight couples, and I don't. Some people can do that, but I don't like. I would. I, I would never be able to go on a trip with two couples. No. So then I went with him, and then we were like the two besties and these two couples. Exactly. And I didn't know what to think, but the two couples ended up being extremely lovely. Um, one of them I actually knew, okay. and uh, but I had never seen her with her partner. I knew the woman, but I had never seen her with her with her mm-hmm. part, with her partner. That was a that was a vacation. That was a we went to Tangier. We went to, which is beautiful Moroccan city. It has so much history, um, a lot of literary history, a lot of queer history, because Mm -hmm. Tangier in the 1950s was an international zone where um, you could, I mean, let me put it like this. It wasn't like walking hand in hand with your boyfriend and making out on the street, but they would look the other way. Exactly. It was like a safe, safe spot compared to the rest of the region. Yeah. And the reality is a lot of people also, you know, it's famous for, you know, William Burroughs and Jack Kurak and Allen Ginsberg and the Beats, mm-hmm. Jane and Paul Bowles. But these people were actually very exploitive to um the Moroccan people. Yeah. Um it was, I mean, really gross. I read some of the passages in this article where Burroughs is like, oh yeah, I bed three Arabs today. I couldn't tell which one was which one was which. Yeah. And it's like Girl, okay, so it's like we need to like rewrite this history as not being this place where it was like a beat haven. It's like no, like these men came here, they like took advantage of like young prostitutes and yeah. did drugs. So that and, wasn't that. And that description alone, I'm just like, Arabs are very diverse. Like Looking, just I not all of them look the same. Girl, I like I like I was so like like this literary nerd side of me was very hyped on being there, and then yep. the more that I was the more and more and more and more and more I was reading, I was like, oh, like this isn't fab. <laughs> but anyway, the trip was nonetheless fab. the vacation aspect though of it was lovely. Yeah, the vacation was fab, and we we actually went to this place outside of Tangier that was mm-hmm. this beautiful fishing village called Asala, and that yes, was I've heard of Asala. Really? Yeah, yeah. I've heard of it. I'm I'm from Egypt, so like neighbor oh yeah, okay I'm, okay awesome yeah. but but yeah so uh yeah it was it was fab and just uh at one point we took shrooms because my friends had they had made shroom chocolates you know and like that like this trip was one of those like thank you god thank you life because it's like we're in the ocean like i'm i'm in the atlantic yeah. ocean but in the atlantic ocean not at reese beach in Morocco, right, in Morocco, exactly. uh-huh. on mushrooms, like belly full of tagine, just be like, just ah, starship moment, romantic. literally, like, like those fucking just like come back to Jesus or whoever moments. Like, have you seen? Um, there's that uh, old Lisa Left Eye documentary where it's like her in. I remember where in South America. I've never my friend. Okay, my oh. friend watches it like twice. My friend Sam. My, well, he habitually watches the same stuff. I mean, I I watch yeah. Golden Girls like literally every day. Okay, valid. But 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 he watches this documentary like twice a year. Really, I do too. I'm obsessed. I think she was in Costa Rica. I think. It well, was. she because she was going. Well, she was there to see Doctor Sebi. Yes, exactly. And she was going through all of her stuff within the group. Like when she kind of took like a hiatus, she was developing her solo stuff, and she just had a whole realization moment over there I highly recommend watching that it's so good it I makes you so make, mad but it also makes so me insightful. i don't want to like I but know that's like the, i i don't i'm gonna be honest i don't i probably will somehow watch it with, with sam yeah but like in like real life sad stuff that's too too sad i get like i i mean like i don't know if i could ever watch the britney versus spears because I would just be so mad the entire time. I I've was, heard how because I've uh, I've heard how awful it really was. Yeah, it was hard to watch, and I'm like a huge diehard Britney Spears fan. Like she's my introduction into pop culture and everything, but that was hard to watch. 
you're just like really sad at moments and then very angry. And then I'm just sitting there in bed during COVID. And I'm like, There's so her, her, do so her dad just doesn't love her. No. Just actually does not love her. I mean, Is that, that's, that's, I mean, right. Yeah. That's, probably that's on some level he does, but on some level, but I think it's just, you know, money, power, greed, and the opportunity of exploitation. He's like possibly. a, he's a schmeagle. Yeah, exactly. That's essentially <laughs> what happened. And I mean, we see it trickled down into like the mom and then Jamie Lynn and they well, all even, just wanted even, to. Well, even Kevin is such a rat. Oh, Kevin is such a she, piece of trash. I wonder, it makes me wonder about, and this is like not me trying to, I'm going to sound so granola, Whatever. but it makes me, it just makes me, because you know, they always say karmically that we choose people that we act out are that different roles. Yes. And they say that, and I'm a big believer in that. They say that, you know, they say that your mother or your father or your sister and your brother might have been, you know, that you know, like you know, a difficult. I, like my mom and my sister have a difficult relationship, mm -hmm. and I often think that in a past lifetime, for sure, my mom was the daughter and my sister was the mother because yeah. of how much hell they've given each other. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, I, I, and, and so I, I, I just, it, it makes you, it just makes you wonder karmically what. In those kind of situations, when it gets so weird like that, what roles everyone what are playing happened, or yeah. what happened or because they, I mean, that, that has to be a soul group, you know, 100%. they have to be playing stuff out. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. And I always think about that, like on a spiritual level, when it comes to Brady, I'm just like, okay, like if God or whoever is real and up there, I'm like, why would somebody want something like that to happen to her? So I'm like, what is like her spiritual or soul purpose on this earth to just like survive through all that, then come out the other side. Like, I always, I don't know if that makes sense, but I just always think about that. I, 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 I agree. You agree? I, I agree. I agree. I, I, I agree. Like, I wonder like, what's the, I hate asking for explanations for things because I think everything is supposed to be elusive and ambiguous. But when it comes to that, I'm like, What's the reason for it? Like, if I was her, you know, the day, like, my conservatorship, like, let off and my dad is slowly burning in hell, like, I would have just, like, <laughs> prayed at night and been like, so, girl, God, what was this for? Like, my, what was this for? My friend Stephen Phillips, Phillips Horst um, hosts a, a really great podcast, and he's a, a called Celebrity Book Club with my yeah. friend Lily Murata, and he's a comedian, and he made this tweet that cracked me up, which was, we freed Britney, yet she remains in that foyer. <laughs> Stays in there, like, twirling I, again. And I, I laughed so because it's like we freed Britney, yet she remains in that foyer. She's like, no, I wanted to stay here. I just wanted to use my credit card so I could order grub like, with your girls. So only good. in this foyer. Well, even recently, did her was her father controlling her recent Vegas run? Yeah. Shit. Yes, this whole thing. She was, I remember there was a thing in like one of her recent testimonies when they were extending the, uh, what's it called? The residency to another leg. He was offering her like papers to sign right as she was getting off stage. Like fully still like coming down from adrenaline, not even necessarily wanting to perform on her own will, yet still just being thrown be like, all right, here's three more years. Here's so more, so and so more years. Yeah. I don't want to say watch... The Britney versus Spears documentary, but babes, I think it might be time to. I, I, I it'll, it will be a, a hard place. watch. It's like to me, it was similar to watching like the Amy movie. Like I saw that in theaters. What's and I, Amy? Amy Winehouse. Oh, yeah, like the that one documentary they had that went into theaters and everything. That was a hard one. To That's watch. like people are already upset about the recent about the Whitney Whitney Houston. Yeah, how do you movie? feel about that? <sighs> It's just so, I mean, I don't know. It's like, it's just so, I don't, I, you know, maybe, you know what? I don't have any feeling about it. Okay. I never watched Bobby and Whitney because it made me too sad. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Is it You're the Venus and Taurus, you think? Like that we're this sensitive when it comes to that <laughs> stuff? Because I'm like the same way. Maybe. Are you a Venus and Taurus? Dude? Yes. Yeah. I, I, because it, it just, I was, I never watched Bobby and Whitney because it was never funny to me, her being a crackhead. Yes. The, yeah. Certain moments like Diane Sawyer interview and that kind of thing is funny. Yeah. But that, that TV show is literally watching someone spiral in their addiction. The Anna Nicole Smith show. It, oh now, my God. I watched completely. that. But I was much younger. Same. I was like four. I was fourteen. And it was years like, old. oh, this glamorous, funny blonde lady. I didn't. Yeah. At, I mean, I, I and I didn't gauge. I mean, I was fourteen. I didn't mm -hmm. or fifteen. I didn't gauge at the time what the fuck was going on. Yeah. And then now, 
I tried to watch an episode and I was like, it wasn't funny at all. No. Because Howard is just feeding her drugs. Oh You're my watching goodness. her spiral. You're watching someone literally being used. And it's like dark. <laughs> all her handlers and everything. Same thing with um, Girls Next Door. Like, I mean, granted, yeah. like the um, house about the house bunnies. Like oh, Holly, oh, Kendra, they Madison. Too? They definitely were to a certain extent. They have like a whole new documentary about that do too own, now. Do they only have to, do they have to sleep with Hef like all the time? Yeah. Like he yeah. was like a, like he was like a full sex addict. Well, no, well, I think he was a known sex addict. That boy, yeah. His sex addiction was like kind of justified, right? That's like, <laughs> I think he probably, I guess. they say he had sex like all the time. Yeah. All the time. And he would offer drugs and stuff like that. He was offering old fucking 70s party drugs what the fuck was it like quaaludes yeah to these fucking like 20 year old girls in the 2000s oh god it's wild i still need to see that to the end yeah completely and i'm like damn girls like as missy one said ain't no shame ladies do your thing just make sure you're ahead of the game but fuck i'm like because they all lived in that house yeah does it still exist no right the playboy mansion i think it does yeah i think now it's like some type of like Museum. Not like history. Yeah, exactly. Like some type of like historical piece or it's fucking their way to the top. <laughs> please, my goodness. I'm like, if that's where it takes you, okay. Let me let me retract my career trajectory and whatnot. Because I mean, hey. But speaking of career and trajectory and stuff like that, um, back to you. I wanted to talk about kind of like your start and where I found you. I actually found you from your writing. Really? Your poetry. Yeah. I saw a repost on Tumblr one time. And then ever since there, that led me on to. Are you serious? Yeah, straight up. From the up. silence of Duchamp? Yep, exactly. And from <clears throat> there, I always just kind of had you in the back of my head or somewhere within like my Spotify playlist or fucking Pandora playlist at the time. That was what, some time in the 2010s. And <laughs> I just thought it was really fascinating how. I'm so 2010. I'm so 2010. <laughs> I mean, that was a fucking era. Like, I think of like that early Tumblr era as like you, Lana, like early Charlie XCX or she had like the fucking plaid crimes of course Grimes like the fucking vocals (laughs) (laughs) that that, one was a little rough but fucking Marina all of them even Azalea too like she was a Tumblr girl was she? yeah okay I feel like I discovered about her a little bit after but maybe so I feel like I would always just listen to like unreleased like Azalea songs Miss Banks you realize she like never collabs with anybody? No, she never does. I know lately she talked about a possible like Dochi collab because Dochi released crazy and she thought it was very like young Rapunzel ish, which like it, it would make a fierce mashup. It would make a fierce mashup. That's all I'm going to say. And I love crazy and I love young Rapunzel. And she was going to plan that collab and then that fell through. I love that. Let me tell you like this. I used to be, I used to be someone that felt like Azalea always shoots herself in the foot. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that anymore. I think that she has carved, I think that she continues to define. I, I would say I think that she continues to redefine what it is to have a massive following and to be exactly who you are. Yeah. And to have people know that and then have to deal with it and love you anyway. <laughs> I agree completely because I, I feel like in that sense she reminds in that sense in that particular aspect mm-hmm. she reminds me of Kanye um, where 100%. where you know where people can say whatever the hell they want but he is the boss and and yeah. you and you and you will you will curtail your behavior your perspectives yeah. and anything if you're going to work with him because he is the CEO. <laughs> Completely. I mean, a new Yeezy shoe drops and people are still in line, even though they were talking shit about him the night before. Probably. New album comes out. Everyone is talking shit about Donda, whatever. A lot of people are watching that live stream and a lot of people ended up tuning into the album regardless. Few, few people few people have that quality. Yeah. Few. Who do you think, if anything, replicates? I think Azalea has that quality. Azalea, I agree. I think Azalea, I think Azalea has that quality. The only thing is, I would say this, and I don't care. I don't care if she were to hear this. I think that I think that right when she starts to win everyone's hearts back, that's she, exactly the match, when like 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 the gunpowder goes. I I feel like yes. I feel like she I feel like she would do better just being at least to have a, take a year off. Just be really lovable for a whole year. <laughs> and because I would say this, it's like, you know, even though we now in this this maybe second era, third era, third third era of his career yeah. have these 
you know, watershed Kanye moments, I would still say we have way more positive. Completely. Uh, we, I, I would say we have way more of, 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 I would say your, your, your idea of his legacy is, is far more yeah. positive. We could clearly acknowledge his contributions to music, fashion, pop culture, his legacy. I mean, Azalea as well, but Kanye just for a no. longer period of time. And it, yeah. it outweighs the cons. The cons in his career just kind of came as of this recent era. And Kanye is a legacy artist. Azalea is not a legacy artist yet. You yeah. have to earn that. I'm yeah. not a legacy artist yet. <laughs> yeah. I. That's the thing. I want new music from her. I want albums. I want to hear projects. I like hearing her voice, whether it's on her fucking Instagram stories. I tune in and listen to those like my mom listening to BBC News. Like, I just press the Instagram story, let it roll as I'm getting ready in the morning. <laughs> and she's cussing out somebody. And I'm like, yes, what a great way to get my day started. But yeah, she's brilliant. <laughs> she read someone. Re no, 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 no. Not, not her. Have you seen this beef between Rolling Ray and Coyle Ray? No, I haven't. You don't know that beef. Wait. She tried. Because I stand both she, of them. Well, she tried to fully co opt Big Purr. And that's like rolling Ray. rolling race thing, yeah. And DC every, legend and, and every no, literally icon, icon, the most icon. famous boy in a wheelchair, the the and, most famous person to ever ride a wheelchair on a train. And I'm Why so happy? and honestly, I'm so happy that he's. In, have you watched Bobby? I love you, Per. Yes, I have. So I still, <laughs> I still so haven't funny. started it. I've seen a few episodes. It's fucking chaotic, but it's amazing. It's still, like it's and so I, chaotic, and I love so that Bobby has Ray on the show, like uh, has Ray in that role because. I feel like the more I, I feel like Ray is one of those people like Tiffany Pollard. They yep. need to always, forever, always. until they are deceased, always. be on television. All I want Tiffany Pollard right. on television right now. Why always. is she not? Did you see? She the needs new, to always be on TV. Did you see Slag Wars? <laughs> like the recent um, version of it with no. Cupcake and Tiffany. No. What's Slag yes. Wars? You don't know Slag Wars. So Slag Wars was the started British. by yeah. It was started by um, the Cock Destroyers. Rebecca Moore and Sophie. You remember those yeah. girls, right? Unfortunately, it's they've day, broken it's up. It's a day now. of rest, but not for exactly. me. Exactly. <laughs> oh, fuck, it's a Sunday. Those two, they had this show called Slag Wars where pretty much they would fly four people over to this fucking random ass <laughs> mansion in the middle of Europe somewhere. Yeah. And they would compete as to who is the next best cock destroyer. Okay. Yeah. And it, they would just have random fucking challenges and mini challenges. It's very similar to Drag Race, but like, I'm not going to say lower budget, but like <laughs> lower, lower budget. budget. Yeah, lower budget. But I'm it, not going to say it. The show streams but... for free, completely for free. We'll say that. But it's so fucking excellent. It's chaotic as fuck. And so for the second season, now that the Cock Destroyer group broke up, they replaced it with Tiffany Pollard and up. Cupcake. Yeah. It was inevitable. <laughs> yeah, they fully went through things. I think one of them um, had this fiance that she really liked. And the other girl thought like she was too dedicating of herself to the fiance to the point where she was like giving up like her own career moves and her own I individuality. I my phone off, but now I need to show you this. So show me. On. Let's wait. You, we bet. Okay, keep going. No, but yeah. Now but I need to. But I need it's to show so good, you this, but yeah. this is very relevant to what it's, we're talking about. It's with Cupcake the Rapper and <laughs> New York. And it's. Fucking excellent she from what I see. She should keep making music. What? Cupcake is excellent. Well, I, she's taking so a bit excellent. of a pause. Okay, look A bit this. of a pause, yeah. Look at this. You are going to gag. And she's caring. I don't I, I don't care how people try to justify it. I think it's a distraction. Let me show you this. <laughs> is it Britney dancing in her foyer? No. So look at this. So, <laughs> so ig ig ignore ignore Tucker Carlson, but just look at right. this. But look at this girl. Hold on, hold no, on. You're good. Lord, okay. Generation. Now, girl, she's carrying! She is carrying. <laughs> you have to send this to me so I can put this up. This she's is. She's carrying! School now you know. defends gender rights of no. trans teachers with giant Honey. prosthetic breast students are skipping class over so singing. Why would you avoid. Wait, she's pulling she's, a scam. She's teaching woodshop with these titties. She's pulling a scam. That's a gender scam. I'm not as, I am not, I'm not, you know, that's a scam. She's caring and I'm here for it, but that's a scam. Because if she was a cis woman, if she was a cis woman with humongous breasts right. and was not wearing a bra to school, mm -hmm. do you know how many mothers and other teachers and faculty would comment? Would the principal would literally pull her into the office and say, ma'am, you're out of school. You have to wear a bra. She knows Miss that girl. she does not have to wear those breasts. 
that big at school. Of course it's going to be a distraction. She's holding it so close to this turkey slicer looking ass machine, whatever this blade is called. She's doing wood shop with these 98 double D titties. Holy shit. Wow. She's carrying like big. Literally. You're not. And you know what? The only thing, I, the, only, the only reason why I think they're right to be outraged is because this is clearly fetish. At and that point, yeah. It's fetish. And I think it, I think it's inappropriate for a high school classroom. If you, I'm sorry, if you saw how these are, these are humongous. Titties, like these are this. They're, like co they they're hang cock this destroyer big. big. Yeah, cock destroyer titties. Maybe even bigger. At least the cock destroyer. But hold like, on, but let me. But now, but now, hold on. But I'm starting to critique myself. Oh, I love. Titties. What if one of the cop? But what if one of the cock destroyers became a professor? Would we ask her to take out her implants? Good point. What if she was like, she was the <laughs> so fiercest. Wait, let me, let me critique myself now. Imagine when we ask her to take out her implants to teach fucking at an Ivy League school. Cock Destroyer takes on, what's a fucking, t Cock Destroyer takes on Harvard. She's the <laughs> fiercest law teacher there. But they're just like, oh, babes, but your tits. Would they keep her, get rid of her? You know what? It's a very good point. So. Their tits are a little more supported though. Whereas Miss Things like maybe, just might be a health concern. Hers hang a little too low for me. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, someone just sent me something. <gasps> What's going on? Oh my God, do I get to go to Harry Styles? <gasps> wait, go wait, hold on, wait. So it's him and Lil Nas X tonight. Two separate venues. Oh. Yeah, whoever planned that, I'm like, great job, girls. He missed out. Because I would have been at both, but... Cause I, this is so rude. I can't believe I'm doing this, Girl, but I think I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm getting ready. I think I, I think I can go to Harry Styles. <gasps> Yay! Oh my God! Pay for a ticket. And blood orange. Oh my God! I need to see. This is actually. I'm so glad we're doing this podcast because I've been avoiding going. Well, if not, there's always Lil Nas X tonight. To at Radio Panini. City. That's my favorite little Nas song. Panini is a Panini. excellent. <laughs> That's such a cute song. Rodeo <laughs> too. Baby. I love him. What do you think of him? I've never met Lil Nas. Yeah. And I would love to. I would. I would love to. I would love to. Well, I would love to. I could see all I mean, Little Nas is like the dream. Yeah, you essentially. Know? Like, I know you mentioned it before, like how he, you know, wasn't out then. David and I heard then that she's him. nice. I heard that she's not a mean girl. No, she's really nice. Jeremy O'Harris her... told me that she's really nice. Who did? Jeremy O'Harris. Okay, hi. Yeah, I met Lil Nas X twice at work. He's really nice. He's really cute. He's like, he has he's a very really young energy to him. I think he's like 22, 23. I mean, granted, I'm only 25, so I'm not but, that much older than him. But, like, he's very, like, he's still, like, loving all of this. And cool. it just, like, is a troll in person, too. Why has there not been a little Nas and Nikki collab? Because he's a barb. He is a barb. Why? I mean, I'm sure this is going to happen, like, any moment. One of these days. Any moment. What would be a cute song for him? She's been kind of going off lately. And I don't, like, who is she? Who is she yeah. going? Who slandered her? Who got this Sagittarius in her bag? Never piss off a Sag. Never. My mom is one, so I know. Yeah, I'm a double Sag, so like. Are you? Yeah, tour son, double Sag. <laughs> so like, I'm either not giving a fuck or I'm fighting. <laughs> but like, who got Nikki so pissed off? I'm, I have no I'm, idea. Because then the barbs are bringing receipts and she's on, she's on, and I said, obviously I follow her on Twitter, and she's on Twitter right. being just like, please stop emailing my manager. We, and the, like, that like, one meme like of we've her. got enough evidence, but evidence on who? I'm like, what? Like, is she a, putting is it together a, a case study? Yeah, I, th I think that's what it is actually. It Did a blog, blog slander her and she I was think like, so. nah? It's very similar to what happened with Cardi before. Like that one publication, that one girl said something about like Cardi like having like fucking gonorrhea or something and giving it to her kid or something and she ended up suing and now that publication that YouTube page fully has a Cardi five million dollars which they do not have yeah. that's actually kind of fab though because isn't that was, if you say some nasty shit like that yeah, yeah let's get right that's like you know what's crazy as much as I'm a Wendy Williams fan someone did a montage of all the nasty things she said about Rihanna and I was like, ooh. Yeah, she said a lot. She said a lot. She said I'm a like, lot. She said a lot. Also, what the fuck is happening with Wendy right now? I know. I I'm really confused because there seems to now be a mental illness element going on and no one is being clear. And I'm like, where the fuck no is her is. son? 
And then business is getting involved too because like the whole bank thing, they were taking away her rights to her money. And I'm like, How I don't think a bank happened? has any hand on Where the that. fuck is Norman? Like, I don't... Right, good question. Where is Norman? That's a very good... He's why, with Sherry, I why is why And why is no one... Because the recent videos of her, she is like, 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 does lymphedema cause dementia? She I There is something know. really, like that latest video of her where she's like, like it like where she, she like pulls out her foot and everything did you see that yeah she's like she's on like like she seems like she's on like percocets or yeah. something and like like i'm like where the fuck are her good friends i hope she has some because she went through a time where she had a lot of close friends with her after her divorce and everything she was friends with a lot of celebrities that the, were really her that cool period her. when she was out and about yeah the, exactly the, the lymphedema oh, that post divorce wendy was everything. yeah post divorce wendy this Bad. I don't I'm not understanding this adult who took control of her money. That's what I'm saying. And I don't understand like all I know is that the bank was like, oh no, like we don't think you're well enough to have that. But I'm like, who how are, are you, you as not, the bank to say that? How you know? are you not well enough? Like you I mean, how are you not physically well enough to control your fucking money? And even if she uses her money and misuses it, okay, then the bank is eating still. Isn't that what they want? I, they want you to recklessly use your money so they can charge that, you interest. That whole like, situation seems very unclear. And it's yeah, very like unclear it. on purpose. I don't like it. Anyway. <laughs> um, I'm not a fan of it. But anyways, I wanted to... <laughs> we mentioned Kanye earlier. Are we supposed to talk about my album? I'm like, we're talking yeah, about... Babe. We're talking about everything, but... but like, <laughs> it's, you're so fucking fun to talk to. I have... Trust me, I'm a professional. I, I have my notes and get everything. Me, I'm like, you get me out. We'll go from... I can go from... I, I no, but that's me. Closer. I'm like, I'm queen of undiagnosed ADD, ADHD, whichever. And I'm like, I don't even need to make the doctor's trip. It's fine. I'll just live with it. It's fun. No, don't. Don't. Me. I always thought ADHD was a scam and that just... I think the most ambitious people have ADHD. Exactly. That's the thing. ADHD I think, is a scam. <laughs> I think all geniuses have some element of like something that's just a little. Have you ever hung with out them. with normal people? They don't get very far. <laughs> no, and they don't age well either. Like, like I was actually just so my friend, we we had dinner at Lucian last night, a group mm -hmm. of us. And we actually stumbled into it, which was cute. Um, because two of us went to go eat, and then one of our girlfriends had just gotten into town. We didn't even know uh -huh. she was in town. Uh, and she and when she went to go eat there by herself, we were like, "Girl, you were gonna go eat by yourself?" But obviously, it worked because she met up with people she knows well. Anyway. Okay, cute. So then, like afterwards, we're like, blah, 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 blah. So it was Tuesday, and I mean, you know, it's Tuesday in New York. You know, usually well, there might be something going on, but probably not. But there might be. So this like artist that she was really into, who was quite handsome when I met him, but oh my god, who he, was like, it? He, I don't actually, I don't know his name, but he had a one, he had a really cute house. He's a successful artist, obviously. So she's like into him, and I get why she's into him. Mm -hmm. But honey, his friends were the most vanilla. I mean, and he was having a dinner party. These were the most pull teeth. We stayed for literally. No. We like stayed literally for fifteen minutes. These were the most pull teeth, like most pull teeth people bland stale expired it's like the reason there's a target in the lower east side yes like which i do love for the convenience we love that fierce little target Trader but we do combo. but yeah but still like so the epitome weird. of like that like yeah. like that <laughs> yeah. and those people aren't fucking fun no they're not fun. And they it was aren't like, fun. like it was literally like like my my friend Alex was just like we got to get the fuck out of here. He was like he was like we're he was like we're, we're literally like the most interesting thing here. We got to get the fuck out of here. Even like <laughs> when those type of people are like fucking drunk or, or whatever inebriated, they're still boring. And I'm just like um okay, or they're just reckless. And I'm like all right, I'd rather you just be boring in your corner instead yeah. of acting a fucking fool. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a New York purist. Like, I'm not one of those people that's going to be like, I miss when New York was this way or that way. Yeah. Because even because when I, cause when, because when I lived in New York when I was younger, it was mm -hmm. quite traumatic. So, like, I mean, it made me who I am. But, like, I don't I don't miss the relentless trauma. Of course. But, <laughs> but. but you know, I, you know, I just, I, 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 and that's the other, yeah, I don't know. I also have very, I also have very maybe, um. 
controversial views on gentrification, but we don't have to talk about that right now. <laughs> Very fascinating. Okay, that's going to be in the Mickey Blanco part two well, interview. Okay. I will say this. Go I don't even know it. if it's controversial. The reason why I get every reason why gentrification is evil, every single reason why, yeah. but historically, cities everywhere around the world, like a city changing its sociopolitical status is literally, that's what history is. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like places are going to change negatively and positively. Right. It's kind of like that thing where for the last, uh, oh, so I grew up for a long time uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah. Um, people were talking about San Francisco being gentrified when I was nine years old. Yeah. And then 13 years old and then 15 years mm -hmm. old. I would say now it fully is. It literally yeah. fully is a soulless Silicon Valley show. But right. it's like people were bitching about that. People were, they, they were bitching about it for almost 25 when years. When there was still and it's some like, flavor back and it's, Yeah, and it's like, babe, that kind of is what happens to a city. It's kind of what a city does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's the misplacing of the families that were there is when I'm like, yeah, uh, that's when we're fucking well, shit up. It's evil and tragic, yeah. but like that also. I mean, and, and and obviously we should fight to create protections. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. But to a certain extent, I just there's a certain kind of person. I, I not even controversial, but I do think there's a certain kind of person that bitches and whines about a city being gentrified, and it's like, babe, you're not adding anything to the conversation. No, oh, what well, it'll be like, like history. <laughs> it'll literally be like Bushwick transplants being like, oh, gentrification. And I'm like. It's like you're you, from Connecticut. Like, like you realize that like this used to be like like a plateau spot. Like quinoa literally, was, like, quinoa was not. <laughs> like, literally, you used to only be able to get like plateau chips. The spot where you're getting a fucking <laughs> latte used to be a fucking Blanton corner. Like used to be a fucking like, Mexican uh, food joint. Now you're here sipping on an espresso. Okay, sis. But yeah, more that you have to say about politics and the way the world works, sweetie. <laughs> Go off those fucking kids. I'm like. Like, if you know you're part of the problem, just don't say nothing. Like, it's cool. The only thing good about Bushwick, there's good dick in Bushwick. There is. I live in Bushwick, too. So there's good pussy, too. The, ooh. Yeah. I mean, but good dick, too. It depends on the day. Hey, trust me. Trust me. It's there. Trust me. Uh, yeah, that's like, what. Well, oftentimes when I'll stay in Manhattan, I'll be like, why didn't I stay in Brooklyn? Like, if I get on grind, I'll be like, why didn't I stay in Brooklyn? Ugh. Manhattan is so specific and it's such trash. And then it's like... You go to Brooklyn, it's like, do do do. Woo! Like, yeah. Oh. Uh huh. Brooklyn is also kind of messy, though. Yeah. That's why I keep my dick appointments quick. Like, yeah. I'm just like, okay, before you pull out meth or anything, let me just suck fucking dip. Oh, we didn't need, I, we, that's a whole nother. We didn't even get it. Wait, 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 wait. Well, just because grinder, uh, like, we have, grinder is inherently evil. What? <laughs> you know what's so fucking funny now that you say this? I've been off Grinder religiously. I've been I've been off of it for a bit now too. Really? We're Grinder we're in Grinder recovery. Because you know what I realized? It's well, evil. this no well I well I <laughs> have known that it's inherently evil, but yeah. I was caught in the loop for a bit. This summer when I I was I spiraled in Vienna, I was caught in the loop. But then <laughs> I, I I'm it's been two years since my ex and I broke up and yeah. I'm really ready to have another boyfriend. And I know that I know, I mean, I know that I know the law of attraction, I believe in it. And I know that if I keep using apps, I'm not gonna find a boyfriend. So that's exactly it. I think Grinder like stops the blessing right there. And I downloaded it today for the first time ever because it stops the blessing. It one hundred percent does like I want to be like instead of being at the gym and seeing somebody cute and of course me being practical and being like let me not just say hi to him let me just try to track him on this fucking app I think that immediately <laughs> stops the blessing why don't we want to be hot and mysterious let me just peacefully put back my dumbbell and I I over the weekend and he'll come talk to me if he wants to over the weekend I had such a cute hookup but it was with someone that I met at a party and see that's and, fine you know we were able to flirt we were literally, I was oh. literally like lifting him up in Times Square. We were like making out oh, on like the, so on like not the phone booth, but those, those, oh, yeah. the, the newspaper things. And like, you know, and like the. That's hot. And like, that was hot. It's and like I, a mini episode of like a love story, like those nights. And like, do you ever get kind of like high, not like high off those, that's so corny, but like you get like jittery and like the butterflies oh, and everything. Yeah. That's me. The, and I'm like, I can't tell if we're just about to fuck or we're getting married this week. The last time that it was kind of crazy, I had this crazy situation where I had fully hooked up with this guy. So I was, so I went to the Venice Biennale for the first time this mm -hmm. year and I met this amazing guy and he had pink hair 
And he like, you know, was a tall, he was, he was actually, he was like, he's from like, like former Yugoslavia. He was actually Eastern European. He was like a big guy. We made out literally all night, hooked up all night, hung out all night. And, and then the next day he was like, I have something to tell you. And I was like, what? Because, you know, when someone says I have something to tell you. And so, you know, I was thinking, I was like, well, you know, I already have HIV. <laughs> so like, I was uh -huh. like, you know, like just so, you know, we are, we had already had that conversation. But yeah. So he goes, something that's going to surprise you. And I said, what? And he said, I'm straight. <laughs> and I was like, what? And he goes, you're the first guy I've ever been with. And I was like, you're, and I go, I slapped, his, I slapped, I go, you're lying. And he goes, no. And I said, you've kissed guys before. And he goes, okay, yeah, at a party. Yeah, maybe once or twice. And I go, what do you mean? Like, you're like straight, straight. And he goes, yeah. I've only ever hooked up with women. And he was 40. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And I was like, so then why did you hook up with me? And he was like, in his German accent, he goes like, because of the energies. <laughs> and no. He's like, and he's like, because Aww. I had never felt this energy with you. And because I, I, I go based on the energies. And he I turned was, him and his soul and out. My girl. I was like, I was like. <laughs> The energies, <laughs> like what about the, me being high? I'm like, what about you wanting to I'm fuck? Like, yeah. The energies. Well, we that was the one thing we didn't fuck, but I thought we just didn't fuck because we didn't fuck. But like you know, you don't you don't always have to fuck. Yeah, of course. But I just thought we I, I just thought we weren't fucking because we weren't fucking. Mm -hmm. Then I realized oh, we probably weren't fucking because he was like that was a can of worms. He probably was not ready to open yet. <laughs> Maybe not. Did he enjoy his time though? The energies he really enjoyed his time. He turned him out. I was. Well, I was supposed to go spend time with him on this farm. And then when my schedule changed, he told me that I didn't have any empathy. I apologized so much. Then he told me I didn't have any empathy. And he stopped talking to me. Pisces. <laughs> now that's a lot of energy. Okay. Now that's a lot of like, en energies. Energies. <laughs> it's the energy. Like, how, how are you going to? That's a lot of energies. <laughs> <sighs> Hookups are fun, though. Hookups are fun though. I've been like I off a of them for a bit, but they're fun. You know what? I had a good summer, but I stayed away from the big gay cities because I still I was traveling all summer. I still haven't gotten the monkeypox vax. And mm. I am um, oh my God, so let me tell you, I actually have talking about monkeypox vax. So I avoided the big gay cities literally because I would have because normally I would have taken my off days in Paris or da 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 da. Yeah. I was or, or or Berlin, you know, I would have had like my Berlin slutty moment mm -hmm. in the summer. That's Girl, so I was so I'm still shook. I I I probably <laughs> would have been more of a hoe here, but like yeah. I just am not vaxxed yet. And I like I've been doing so much every single like I had mm -hmm. so we ended the Florence tour. I had Saturday and Sunday off, but then already Monday I've been doing so much. Saturday, I'm dumb because I could have gotten the monkeypox vax outside of this party. And at first that sketched me out, but I was like, fuck, I should have done it. Was I it a dick appointment? Um, uh, I think so. I don't know the name of it. Okay. But it was a party we were going to go to. My friend told me. Gotcha, I should have okay. done it. Um, my friend gave me a link. I need to actually sit down. Probably after this podcast, I'm going to sit down at lunch and like, and like figure it out. But I had a weird thing happen. Well, not a weird thing happen. Mm -hmm. We'll tell the whole truth. So I have another, pro I have another band called Expat. Yeah. And it's like a performance art thing. Mm -hmm. And... And so we play a lot with Americana and with structure and with and systemic and 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 we talk about systemic racism yep. and it's like a very political project. But you know, we we try to be tongue in cheek, you know, and it's it's not it's not make it's a lot of things at once. It's making fun. It's also very serious. We have this song called A Simpler Time where the lyrics are like, you know, um, and it's the song is about accountability. And it's like, you know, there was no TV on there was no TV on MTV the day Aaliyah died. It was a simpler time. It was a simpler time. I said there was no TV on MTV the day Aaliyah died. It was a simpler time. It was a simpler time. Doom, da doom, doom, da doom, doom. Hit me, baby, one more time. Doom, da doom, doom, da doom, doom. Hit me, baby, Love. one more time. Doom, da doom, 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 doom. Free your lady mama lie. Free your lady mama. It was a simpler time. It was a simpler time. George Bush doesn't care about black people. It was a simpler time. So it's like we play yeah. with all this stuff. Anyway. All those but, references so, completely. When I do this act with my with my best friend Sam, I was basically wearing this costume where I was painting my face like Braveheart. I was painting my face in thick Krylon makeup, entirely yep. navy blue with a white spot here. Uh, I was giving myself like a mullet wig and I had the NYPD blue hat with the NYPD blue sweatshirt. Uh -huh. And anyway, 
I was doing this look. Anyway, so when we started the project in the spring and it wasn't as hot, and I think that I would always wash the makeup off, you know, and you know, I continue this, but this summer in the heat, I think sweating, it started to really clog my pores. Mm. And I had a good like two and a half month run where my skin was fine. And then girl, all of a sudden, like Just in June, let you have in it. June, the makeup let me have it. Ugh. And I got like three insanely huge pimples. Like, no. like hardcore, uh, like big, big, six, like hardcore, like yeah, fist yeah, yeah. And my dumb ass Thought. picked two of them. But then like, I just, it got to a place where girl, I was like, didn't know what to do because like, and I was like, I mean, I, I started taking care of so much, so much, so much care of my skin. But mm -hmm. at one point I was like, I called my mom and I was like, mom, people are going to think I have monkey pox. And like, yeah. <laughs> so like, we're a person was, with like, pimples. Like I Good was enough. like, ah, but anyway, um, okay. We're, uh, no, no, no. We had, I feel like we all had that scare. <laughs> I was really sick in July for, I fully like, burnt out like i got tested for monkeypox i got tested for covid everything i just fully burnt myself the fuck out to the point where i was sick i was at home i had a fever and i was also breaking out really bad that week and i was just like oh my god it's the end and it was this whole thing and then two days later my skin was gorgeous after i just fucking like slept for once and problem solved you know what I recently just got into? So I had been doing these vitamin IVs. And at first I was doing it Ugh. just to like, you know, as like for a kidney thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, it's like, I, I, I just, I thought, you know, okay, like I drink, like I take drugs sometimes, like I party. Uh, yeah. Like, so like, I'm like, I should, like, this is a really, because when you do the vitamin IV, then like all the vitamins and the minerals and all that stuff, they go straight into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what you, what, I mean, you get it, you can get them from food and eating healthy and everything. But like. It just direct. It just yeah, your digestion eats up a lot of it anyway, but but yeah. it's just really good for your kidneys and liver and shit. And so, but I didn't realize that people also do it for their skin. And so I heard about have you ever heard of glutathione? Yeah. So I started really getting into that and I really like I've really seen it like 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 like, no. like I I got one the other day and I didn't tell my band I was doing it. And when I came back, they were like, well, the next day they were like you're glowing. And I was like, Really? And I was like, It's an IV as well? The, yeah, that's the, gluto, the glutothionine. Get into it. You need to send me your it's, plug it's, the, the place city. is called Revive. It's, it's on 1140 Broadway. Uh, 1130. Okay, I'm there. Literally planning to go next week yeah. once I get paid. <laughs> that's what we're waiting on, babe. Vita Glow. We're not making it's me. Called, the IV is called Vita Glow. Vita Glow. And you, the next Because your day, skin is gorgeous. Mine? Yes, your skin. I need to sweat. I haven't. I literally. I, I take some from me. I need please. to sweat. I need to. I like. You know when that? Because I, I. You know when you. When you. You know when like you have that post workout face and you're like, oh, I'm. <sighs> yeah. Pulled everything. Yeah. That's what I, I need to. I got one of those little like facial massager things, like the ones that like send in like electro currents or whatever. And I was just thinking about it today. I was hot on it for like three months and then I fell off because I was like does this shit actually work let me test it to see if it doesn't work these three months I'm like bitch you should have just stayed the fuck on it now you're testing yourself out in this I'm placebo so, are effect you, I'm weird like this if, if I eat I can't go I mean this makes sense but like if I eat I like can't go to the gym but, but if I eat like anything mm. <laughs> like I, I have to, to be in a, a fasted little. state Ugh, see like I could do a fasted thing if I'm doing like cardio <laughs> or whatever like I box so like Oh, do you? Oh, yeah, hon. That's cute. I did not fuck around and I say I either... Boxing. No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not fucking around and I say I either don't give a fuck or I'm fighting. That Your is exactly also why. Very white. Really? Yeah. Okay, good. Because as of lately, this coffee I'll be drinking, I'm like, you know, let me go in and face tune in. Your just teeth, like, yeah, your teeth are up. very white. My t I always... So I only... I always get my teeth done in Portugal because it's so much cheaper. Ugh. But I need to... It's been, it's been about three years. I need to go... I need to get them. Your teeth are gorge. I'm dreaming of my turkey getaway where I go and I come back with a few souvenirs. I can't wait to do that. <laughs> That's exactly what the fuck I'm gonna do. I have the caption already made on Instagram. I know which doctor I'm gonna tag. Just a few little souvenirs. <laughs> I can't wait. Just that trip to Portugal just sounded the same, and it made me think. I'm like, maybe I need to look up a dental surgeon there too and add teeth whitening. A friend of mine, and I think, and I think I'm ready for this because I, I, I'm a, I. I, I'm so old fashioned in that way where I think I, and I just, I, I think that men, cis men really do have, and butches really do have to be very careful 
with plastic surgery. Yeah. But very. Like, I think way more careful than cis women yeah. and femmes. But my friend just got this done, and I think I'm going to do it. He got a fat transfer where he got just a little bit of fat added to the underneath of his eye. And he's already cute. Uh, no, he's, yeah. this is the thing is, he got it and he's already fab looking. Like he's very attractive. But when we saw him recently, we didn't, we were like, why does he look younger? And we were like, cause he already looks fab. I mean, yeah. he's a very, he's a, he was a model for years. Gorge, yeah. But we're like, why? Like gorge, gorge. But we're like, why does he look younger? Mm -hmm. And then one of my homegirls later at the after after spilled the tea. She's like, girl, he went to Mexico and he got a fat put under his eyes. Like, and I was like, ooh, that might As be. she should. I'm like that. I'm send like, the that, address, I'm send like, the that, link. I'm like, that might be my Christmas present to myself. That's cute. Maybe just because, yeah, like, I guess, does it fill in like certain circles or I'm assuming, even though you don't have any or like your friends sounds mm. like they don't have any. I want to be preventative. I, I actually, that part. honestly, I would do, I would even do it this year or next year. Cause I don't want to keep I don't want to keep nipping and tucking. I kind of want to like I'm, I I would I would very like maybe next year do like a fate like a just a like a gentle just a gentle pull. lift yeah. Do I the see lift. those on Instagram and I'm like I see the thread ones now and I'm like do those threads dissolve because I'm a very expressive person it's so like I don't want to break <laughs> one of those threads and then well my other question is with the thread. Because like, the only thing that I don't want is to end up with that feline shape. Exactly. Because that does not. Because then you'll, you will look girls. different. Yeah. And then you look like your face is just being pulled back and not in a cute way. Like, like it just gives very like Yolanda Hadid. Like, old, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like old woman in her ponytail yeah. facelift. That kind of vibe, which ain't it for us. We're still very youthful. And still have gorgeous faces. But I do want just the little. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, a little bit a little just a soft touch just a soft touch i'm not fu fucking or touching my nose though however a lot oh, of people want to get their noses done and i'm I like no that's how you my, ruin the secret that will make me look very i don't want to look different i just want to yeah i actually think i actually think i was peak in my mid-20s and maybe i'll be and maybe i think my 40s will be good because i'll finally be disciplined enough to stick with something um, but when I look <laughs> at pictures of me when I'm like 20 and like in my early 20s, I'm way too thin. Mm -hmm. I have I like I have I have the I have the eye thing from like being too thin. Yeah, I yeah I think that's I don't know what that is because I go through the same thing too. I'll look back at like times in college where I was like in my twink era. I'm never dedicated to a full on twink era, <laughs> but it was the closest I got to a twink era because I'm yeah. just gonna be naturally thick from here on out. <laughs> but. I looked and even then, like, I thought I was snatching, killing. And I'm like, no, sweetie, you look a little hungry. Like, it looks <laughs> like you need some almonds. Or, or Actually, that's all I was eating at that time. Uh, no, babes, you go and get yourself a goddamn uh, meal. And it's it's so funny how we look back. Even, like, I'll look back on pictures, like, from six months ago and be like, eh, I wasn't feeling it that day. And I'll be like, bitch, but you were people eating. But people look better with age. Like, yeah. I, I'm going to be honest. I think, like, it's like when you see young pictures of J-Lo. She definitely looked better in her 30s. I mean, and on, mm -hmm. I think. I you agree. Know what I, mean? I agree. Even like different like weight fluctuations and stuff like that. Like you think like all the girls would be in their peak when they're like the most snatched or whatever. But then you look back and you're like, no, like it doesn't fit your frame. Like it really it goes to say that like each person's body it's so is different. It's crazy because like, I, is she on your board? You'll look. Yeah, she is. Like when Paris Hilton was a teenager. I was just about I to think, bring her up. I think when she was a teenager, her personal style was so out there and so cool yeah and it's funny because now she doesn't dress conservative but she dress like she used to dress kind of ahead of the pack and now like she's I, she's not she doesn't dress conservatively yeah but compared to how it's like she kind of just dresses like a normal prim rich woman woman now. whereas her style like i i, I expected her maybe to go in the more anna de la russo direction exactly and to continue to be eccentric Still push, and make, yeah slight boundaries you yeah know, gently she, she's really but she's really recoiled <laughs> yeah that's that's the word for it whereas back then she was turning fucking 20 on wearing that dress the one that ever and now recreates from fucking fashion nova or mystique boutique or something yeah she's fucking fierce she's someone too that didn't touch her nose either and that's how yeah. she still looks good like she obviously looks like she got you know Generous touches done to the face and great makeup, but it's not like oh she, she has a new face. You know who looks great now? Who? And I don't care. People can dispute me. I think she looks like because I think everything is finally evened out and she stopped. I think little Kim looks great. I think so too. I thought about this not too long ago. I think I she think looks she looks great. Wonderful. I think she looks great. 
I think she looks really great. I meant to see her the other month at some festival they had. Like, I feel pride. like she finally stopped. Yeah, or maybe like they just know the right formula or concussion or however many times a month she goes to get a little touch up here and there, which is fucking fierce because if I had Lil' Kim money, I'd be doing the same shit too. I'd be planning out my new face rollout like I'd be planning an album rollout. I'm like, how much How much can we do over? If Peter Piper pecked him. Okay, I don't want to derail no, you. No, oh, no, you're good. I should answer at least one question about my album. <laughs> no, because also it's excellent. Okay. <laughs> from the songs that are out, from the songs that are out. I just want to ask you about, like, it may sound like a basic question, but the thing that stood out to me the most, and I've always, like, followed you in your music, like I said, for a minute now, but what brought the album upon my radar is I would see my friends of mine, like, repost your songs, like, French Lessons and stuff like that onto their stories, and I would just see the cover first, and I was like, what the fuck is this? Because mm -hmm. the album was called Stay Close to Music, and it was also formerly... Close to God, correct? Yeah, how do you know that? <laughs> I do my fucking research. I'm a professional. How do you know? Yeah, the album I'm a professional. originally, originally, originally was called Stay Close to Music, Stay Close to God. Yeah. Was that, was it supposed to be like a double kind of album? Because I know there's two people or individuals, whether that be you or whether that be a character that's just on the album cover. Um. Well, so actually the reason why I shifted the title is because... Um, well, yeah, it's just this is the truth. I felt like even though I feel very comfortable in my spiritual and religious affiliation, mm -hmm. that a lot of people still, especially queer people, have not so nice of a relationship yeah. with with their spirituality and and with and 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 even the whole concept of God is very uncomfortable for a lot of queer people. Yeah. Uh, because of you know growing up Catholic or printed or just any I mean any you know any form of religion or spirituality in which they were or they ever felt condemned yeah and I didn't want to turn people off from listening to the record if God was in the title because mm -hmm. right? because that would carry a lot of implications whereas stay close to music is you know yeah it, it's it's light it's lighter in a way yeah completely how's your relationship <clears throat> with your spirituality and God. Um, so this is gonna sound in super, super, super loopy, but so my dad is a psychic, mm -hmm. um, and he's not a predictive psychic, but he is very like he can like I mean he and he's tuned into his gift way more in the last twenty years. When I was growing up, I wasn't I didn't find out that he was psychic until I was twenty. Um, I was, I mean, really, what's funny is we were at a family reunion one time and a woman asked him for a reading and, and he kind of like shushed it away from me. I don't know if he thought it would freak me out or he, he, he kept it from me until I was 20 years old. And, um, when I found out, I was like, oh, okay. Was he like actively practicing his well, psychic abilities he, with people? No, I think, I think he, I think he shut them off for a long mm. time. He's since really, really reconnected with that part of himself. Mm. Um, he can read energy extremely well. I mean, so like, I, like it's it's hard for me to because people are like, oh, can I can I call your dad for a reading? His readings are more psychological. They're not. You yeah, know, I, I've I've been to a predictive psychic who was excellent. Mm -hmm. um, a costume designer in L.A. Uh, sent me to this woman that was absolutely wonderful, but she was very predictive, you know, and she was the real deal. Yeah, my dad is not that kind of psychic, but he will offer you insight into how you can maybe overcome a situation or work through a situation. So it's I like see. almost like psychic therapy. Yeah. Um, last year, I went through a period of sobriety. And when I, and I, and this has happened a few times, but when I enter periods of sobriety, I start to have paranormal experiences. Mm. And so I have a very strong spiritual connection. Um, I would say because of my lifestyle, I probably have not tapped into what's particularly possible. Um, but I had a birth chart reading in 2020 and this woman was an astrologer. She wasn't mm -hmm. a psychic, but she told me that in my late thirties, she said, she said, she said this, she said, you were going to get, she used the word you're, she said, you're going to get blown wide open. And she was talking about, and so I, I would say this year I have started to have lucid dreams that are so lucid 
that they're, they're, they're so lucid and I'm so awake. Yeah. I had a dream. I had a dream about two months ago where I was so awake. I knew that I was physically at the place. Not in my body, but I, I knew that I was physically, wherever this dimension was, wherever wh- whatever right. I was experiencing, I really was there. Wow. And I had never had that happen before. So um, I would say this. I'm probably, I, I would say this. If I were to really go into it, because also other psychics have told me this. They're like, if you want to develop it, you have to, you know, like... There's a lot of things like they say that, you know, you should be like, if you really want to develop it and you don't have to do all these things. I mean, some people are born Born. really strongly with it, but they say, if you want to develop it, you know, you need to be sober. You need to probably not eat meat. Yeah. Um, You need to like, and and, you know, and you can. Very much that Dr. Sebi approach, like strip your body of like those certain things. So your, your mind and your soul are really all you have. To fall yeah, back on. I don't want to. I'm gonna be honest. I have a lot of shit going on. I don't want like in the in the paranormal experiences that mm-hmm. I have had. Not that they freaked me out, but I don't know if I'd want to deal with that all the time. I don't. I don't. I don't know if I, I don't necessarily know if I want to be that in contact with spirit all the time. Yeah, it's a cute party <laughs> trick. It's a cute party trick to pull out. But like, then when you're trying to go to bed every night after fucking opening up for Florence while she can't sleep because demons are kicking and caring. It's like, like I. Yeah. 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 I don't. I don't, I don't know if I want to be that damn open. So, but I've had some, I've had some, I really have like, and it's always in a period of sobriety. I've had some very odd things happen. I saw, mm-hmm. I, I saw a KKK man at the foot of my friend's bed. Yes. And then I find out that that area used to be like a, a really big white supremacist part of California. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm like, like this man, like it was a KKK man. He had on a hood in his, in his head. My God. And I literally saw this at the foot of her bed. I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw this at the foot of her bed and I screamed. And I was like, and I said, Archangel Michael, please protect me. Oh and my like, gosh. Like, <laughs> anyway. That's wild. Yeah. And that's overwhelming. Yeah. So too. I don't know if I'd want to experience shit like that all the time. More often, yeah. No. One, I don't know if I want to go through the learning curve. Just one cameo like that is fine. Nothing <laughs> Nothing more. Is that why the album cover, like it takes place in a bedroom. There's the one image lying on the bed. Oh, and the, the one and kind of. The, yeah. The, the, the guy is. He's sitting. Well, they're both. They're they're both little. They're both angels. Yeah. They're in a. The son. One of my friends was like, "Oh, it reminds me of Good Night Moon." You know the illustration. Yes, but, exactly. That's what I got. Very but, much. You like know, they're Frank. Do, the artist. He's a wonderful artist. Frank. It's so crazy. He did my cover first, but he also recently just did Steve Lacey's. Yes. Um. And oh, I. When, oh my god! When Steve came out with that cover, I was like, "Damn it! Damn it! I'm bitch. like the girls. I'm like the girls. Yeah. Really, I'm like the girls. Will really be in the know." They know, especially Steve's the key. He is a sweetheart. I just saw him earlier today at work. He was just here. Where do you work? I work at the Breakfast Club in Power Under Five. I produced for them. Oh, was he? Um, was he? Was he doing an interview? He was not for a Breakfast Club. He was doing with another on-air personality. Uh, okay, Chris he's Taylor. a key. Shout out. He's such a key. He's a heartthrob. Oh, I know. <laughs> and I was supposed to go record his interviews, and usually with people that I like or people that I like and I find cute. Always be like, can I cover that interview? And I'll make sure to show up looking he's, really cute. Be running. He's a hard. He's a, Steve's a heartthrob. <laughs> um, if you have the digits, girl. I don't know what. I don't have the digits. Slide him over. I don't have the digits. He was always. He was very always very sweet to me when I would see him in LA. Share the profile. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. But speaking of angels, to another place where a lot of people know you from your feature contributions to is Charlie X's Fembot, which is a fucking class. Oh my God. But apartment. honestly, I, but honestly, no. Okay. Let me tell you, hit it. like Charlie, like Charlie is such a key. And years ago in 2012, she asked me to do a song and I played in her face. And so, and I was kind of bitchy about it and I like, didn't want to do it. And so then, you know, she becomes a pop star she asked me to do this song. I'm like, of course. I literally remember playing in her face. Like, you know, yeah. like Charlie is to me one of the most iconic. I'm gonna be honest, I'm serious. I think she's one of the most like iconic, like 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 literally young pop songwriters, like of like however many of this however many eras. Like songwriters and just like song creators. So I, like she literally, she literally created, she she redefined what a pop star and she still is doing it for herself. And that's yep. amazing to me. But I really regret doing Fimba, and you know why? Because, like, so many people 
don't like me on the song. Like every like, and I'm not I'm not joking. Pop yeah. two came out in 2018, mm -hmm. and do you know that at least once a week I will get a tweet that says that I ruined Fembot. Really? And it's like really. It's like it, at first it didn't. At first it didn't bother me, but now after the last five years, like just if you go to Mickey Blanco Fembot. It's always I, and, and 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 her fans are cuckoo. They're Angels, still talking. Yep. They're still talking about it. I'm like, how are you still talking about Fembot? Like, like, like they'll be like, they'll be like, Mickey ruined the song. And then some people will be like, I don't know why people say Mickey ruined the song. I love that verse, but the overall feeling is that I ruined the song. That's fucking whack because I think your your verse is where a bridge would essentially be. I mean, it's like I, I think it's I just excellent. Try, I just tried to fit the vibe of the song. Maybe it wasn't you the best verse. You killed it. Do you Ghost want a femba? Do you Ghost, want a hobo? Ghost of the shell. I'm a beast in the sheets. I'm a, I'm a new chum. Bum, bum, blow. When they be going to spray that ray gun. Fall to his knees. I'm a lightning rod. I'm a bite that rod. Do you want a femba? Do you want a hobo? I just tried to fit. You ate that. You really did. Do you want a femba? Do you want a hobo? Ex machina, na, na. You can't win. I'm HIV. I ain't that I don't know. I just tried to fit the vibe of the song. You that. You Eight I don't that. know. I just tried to fit the vibe of the song. Real tea. I listened to that album like a week or two before it came out in like one of the leaks. And that was like my favorite immediately. And that verse was one of my favorite parts of the album. I'm bionic, like, not ironic, super, super saying it's super, super, super I thought it was a cute verse. It's a key. People, people say I ruined the song. Whack. I hear that too about um, Delicious 2 with Tommy Cash, but I just think that's her fan base and not even like her fan base but it's like those white twinks don't care about hip hop artists or rappers contributing to her music unless if they're cupcake unless if they're brook candy which is fucking whack because Tommy Cash tore up delicious I'm sorry <laughs> it's such an excellent song it's such an excellent fucking contribution too and people say that about um shake it as well and like Pablo Vitar's verse, is, verse on um, I Got It. Granted, Pablo isn't a fucking like hip hop or rap artist, but like yeah. people always like turn the song down after Pablo's verse. And I'm like, you know, right, the fucking <laughs> squealing. <laughs> no, but like, yeah, that's fucking awesome. And I agree when it when you're saying how Charlie's like one of the best. <laughs> no, she's like definitely one of the best to ever do it. Of our time. I think she's one of the most influential girls, especially for her to come from that. Like, I always call it like, the Tumblr girls, like the Charlie, the Marina, the Lana, like they were kind of like the C class pop girls. Like, cause there's, you know, the Beyonce, the Britney. Then I want to collab like, with Lana so bad. I'm hoping really? after, I'm hoping after this album that there's a, a window of opportunity. I think it would happen. You know who I think I am going to collab with? And if it doesn't happen, it's fine. But we've mm -hmm. been talking a lot. I think I'm going to collab with Sam Smith, hopefully. Really? Because we're That'll like, be well, we've, we've begun, like, I think uh, we've, we're in the beginnings of, I think, like, a genuine, like, friendship. Yeah. And I think that when he hears the album, he might like it. And that would be fab. He's, I, I also feel like his next batch of music is really going to turn. Because what he's posted on Instagram is the lyrics what are What do you think nuts. about the thing with Kim Petras? That one song that, that he put together? Because a lot of people are like dragging that. Oh, well. I no, I love it. They, they're dragging something. it. Yeah. yeah, the girl. They're dragging it? For it. Yeah. Why? Is he not allowed to be cunt? That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. I generally don't yeah, have any type of no. opinion on that song. But I'm just like, this sounds like something that Sam's, like Kim would serve on her own. Sam's definitely allowed it. Like, they want to, like, girl, like, stop trying to keep people in boxes. He's right. literally allowed to be cunt. Let her be cunt. She can be cunt. Let her be cunt. She can be cunt. Everyone <laughs> needs to have their moment. Everyone needs to have their moment of cunt. And if she wants to feel it, feel she it. She needs to have her moment. This, this, you guys have really been on, we've really been on a saga. We have. It's been a journey, but like, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Genuinely, it's the perfect, like, fever dream ending to my arty fever dream-esque day, <laughs> which is perfect. And I wanted to talk about, like, your other collaborations with other people as well, because, like, you've really done a lot, like, for your music and career solo-wise, but as well with other people, like, you fucking worked with Madonna on the dark ballet video yeah do we regret that one no okay i was about to say she's still my friend that's my friend that's your friend that's my friend because you got the call from her in an ikea yes i dipped in that kitchenette baby i dipped in one of those kitchenettes and i closed the curtain <laughs> there's a customer in kitchen on aisle b6 like, i'm on the phone with madonna well it's just like, so crazy because like i 
there there will be things that I'll invite her to. You know, and last time I saw her was I saw her at, at dinner. This spring I saw her at dinner. She had dinner and we had dinner in LA. Mm-hmm. And it's just so funny to me because like I don't think about it. I really don't. But then like yeah. every once in a while I'll be like, it's so crazy because when I text her, she texts me back. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm so yeah. like, wow, but I don't text me back. <laughs> Cause it's not like it was one of those like one time interactions where it's like, oh, thanks for being in this video and that's it. Like that's that's friend. I took that's her, actually friend. I took her son to see like Thor or something. I took really? her son to see, well, like with his like nanny. But, yeah. Like I like <laughs> like I took because we were because that because a lot of people don't know that when she was living in Portugal, not at the beginning of it, but I moved and I did not know when I moved. I ended up living, and this is not a joke. I ended up living like a 10 minute walk away from her. She lived wow. in because like our apartment was on the hill. She lived at the bottom of the hill in a palace. Mm, of um, course. Yeah. And it really was a palace. But the facade of the palace was like, it's that European style where there's a front. You don't, it's really unassuming. You don't know that, you don't know that it takes up a whole entire block. Exactly. And that it's like a blockade Mm -hmm. on the inside. It's a palace on the inside. Wow. But from the, but from the front, it's just a facade of like a normal building. But she she lived, she lived like a 10 minute walk away. Me and my boyfriend, we would go over for lunch and stuff. Wow. It was cute. It was, it was She was making the album at that time. Yeah. Which then had Dark Bell Eye on. How's yeah. that experience like working with her? I mean, that? she was extremely hands on with mm-hmm. Dark Ballet. Like she really directed me. Yeah. Um, she even though I worked with her choreographer for like four days, mm. um, she ended up like doing the choreography like that day on set. Yeah. It, I mean, it was a long day, but it was I mean, the whole entire process. I mean, I had listened to that album in London. I had come to London to her house in London and yeah. heard it. Um, just the whole entire experience was nuts. The whole entire experience was nuts. And now that, you know, we can kiki, I, I wonder if she's going to do another album. I think she should. I think she is. She's in this, like, whole party phase where she's fucking everywhere in New York. Like, she was in the Bronx the other day with that other I, fucking artist. Like, Madonna's everywhere. She might I, be in Brooklyn this I weekend. I hate that. I I kind of do. That I, no, 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 no. Not, I said I, I hate mm-hmm. that I missed this Rosalia concert. I, I hate could, that, too. That was yesterday. But I could see a new Madonna album taking... Because I, I could see a new Madonna album taking that, taking kind of like, I could see her kind of working with some of the production. That Where Moto Mami up. went. Yeah. I What's, agree. How do you say it? Moto Mami or Moto Mami. Yeah, okay. Like that kind of, because she's like, you know, girlies with Arca and everyone. So it has that like noise rock element to it. The hyper pop elements, the clashing, those distorted sounds. So I definitely can see her go down. That route. I also wanted to ask you if you've been in contact with Tiana at all. Oh, girl, probably probably never again in life. Probably never again. Those are cheap girls. Those are cheap girls. Yeah. Would you say Kanye is too? No. Okay, because I know you were talking about you mentioned Kanye before. Yeah. I might do something with him again. Really? Coming up? Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I never. And let me tell you, it was never. That's the thing. It was never about Kanye. It was never about Kanye, and she tried to front on me. I didn't even want to go into the tea. She tried to front on me like, "Oh, you know, you're you're putting me. I'm I'm like, you don't want to go after Ye, so you're coming after me because I'm because I'm mm. like whatever, blah, blah, blah. girl. No, I'm coming after you because your people have been on the Kanye's not on any Kanye's not on these emails. Kanye's people aren't on these emails. Yeah. Your people are on all of these emails. Mm. You're the, and 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 also I'm gonna be honest, I'll talk shit. I don't give a shit because she's cheap to me. Um, just like girl, like. That even like just like being so like being so uninvested in her own damn album. Like I wrote on the album, I know. Just like coming in, being like, oh, what part do I sing? Like, just girl, I don't, I don't see it for her. I think she's very talented. Like, I see it for her as a showgirl. I think she's a. I think she, first of all, I think she's an excellent singer. Yeah. I think she's an excellent dancer. Mm-hmm. When I see the things that she puts together, I think they're excellent. But she's a lazy rich girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So was it? But it was Kanye though that produced the song, uh, or he had a hand in production. Like, it was, it was a mix like, of people. It was like, I curate, produce, yeah, oversee <laughs> that type of thing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And you, you know, ended up getting but like I just think I just I don't know I don't I just don't I don't get her tea. Uh, she's not she's she, I don't she's she's not my kind of girl. Yeah. Did you you ended up getting credit though for the song eventually? One, even though I wrote on two, I wrote on hurry. Really. Yeah, and they never credited me. I I didn't just work, I didn't just write on works as pussy. I also wrote on hurry. Yeah, 
Ye raps the verse that I wrote on Hurry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't write the whole verse, but I, he used half of it. How'd you get in contact with them? Um, they contacted me. Eli Russell Lennox contacted mm -hmm. me. Um, yeah, they're good people. Yeah. Honestly, it's one of the most inspiring work environments I've ever been in. Yeah. Seriously. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people read her for how she treated me. She thought she thought I was so underground that people weren't gonna she thought I was so underground. She thought I was so small potatoes that people weren't gonna that people weren't gonna care. But no, underground no, is fierce. That's no, where the new shit comes from. No, no, baby. No, baby. I wasn't that underground. You 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 played that card wrong. You thought nobody was gonna give a fuck. And everybody literally like like the girls were like, no, I've seen people on Twitter they're like, no, you were right to gather her. <laughs> yeah. And you've had a 10 year long career. You're like, not just like they like, no, she she played she played her cards wrong with that one. <laughs> yeah, no. And see, that's my thing. And that's why I like for this show, I like having artists that necessarily didn't get their credits on huge contributions that they've been a part of onto the show to be able to speak about. Session. It's never to like stir anything up, but like recently we had um, Jay Sane on, who's used to be a former writer for Bad Boy, Danny D. Kane, Fergie, Sean Kingston, a whole bunch of people. And he wrote Fire Burning by Sean Kingston. Mm. And he never got one writing credit. It was originally his song to begin with. He was going to be a potential artist at Bad Boy. He gave the song to them. They're like, fierce song. A few months go by. Babes, we're actually going to give it to this other artist that we have. It blows up and everything. And so he came here a few weeks ago and told his story about that. And the girls run the not, game. The not girls run the game. Not, I mean, you know, and a lot like, you know, like I said, like, I'm an, like, I mean, I have written for other people, but I'm also an artist in my own right. So that, that being able to use my platform, you know, like, I, like, like I, I feel like I can come out about something and I'm going to be fine. It's not, yeah. it's not going to, it's not going to hurt me. Whereas I think they have to be way more careful, but <laughs> anyway, to end on a positive Anyways, note, to end on a fucking stay close to music positive. comes out October 14th. No, you're still doing more dates with Florence. We, we did our two weeks Correct. and we okay. are done, but, but just putting this out into the ethers, I, the yeah, 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 are coming out with an album this fall. Yes. And I want to be their opener. We're going to put that out there. You should. Um, the yeah, yeah, are coming up. The Smashing Pumpkins are coming up with a new album. I want to be their opener. <laughs> um, and you know, Sam I Smith. Collaborate with Sam Smith. Yeah, I want to be your opener. <laughs> that would be hot. They're going on tour soon. I think. Beyonce, add me to add, add me add, add to. me to a few nights on the on the um, the Renaissance Ball on the Renaissance whatever Ball. It's gonna be called add me B A A B. Talk yo shit. I mean. <laughs> She's had so many excellent queer people on her album. You would be a fantastic fucking addition. I, I just fucking excellent creative. I mean, I also just would like, I feel like we would have good conversation. I think so too. Solange is so sharp. So. Solange is brilliant. So. I want to see her fucking ballet show. I'm so mad. I'm I feel like, you know, it's like the big sis. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like what Philip Beyonce would have just like, I just feel like, I just feel like if you could key with her, I mean, come on. Like she's like, it's Beyonce. Like the insight is wild. <laughs> wild. When Kevin, we had Kevin Aviance on the show yesterday. And just him sitting there and talking about like meeting her, I was like, I'm one degree away from Beyonce. Grant, I'm sitting with a fucking I legend. To, I used still. to think if I met her, I would cry. And now I don't think no. I would. I think I would appreciate her more because she's known to be like a very shy, like quiet girl. And I like that. I, I was talking to Kevin about this. I like those performers that are beasts on stage. But off, they're just like, they're just like cool people. Like you wouldn't expect anything of them. Girl, I, be, I don't know. I, I don't. It's so funny. I. I don't read her as shy. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say shy, but like, I don't much, read her as she's shy. not thought to fierce off stage. No, no, is the but point. I bet, I bet Beyonce has a mouth. She's a Virgo. I bet she has that a part, mouth. Okay. I bet she has but a mouth on her. That would be the fun Beyonce to get to know. That's why I miss like her doing interviews and stuff the like that. Show she, interviews where you see her face being like, uh. <laughs> I mean, we could just send your luggage home. That one where they're getting it. That shit. <laughs> that's historic she said no I'm actually gonna plan your Irish exit from <laughs> that shit was so fucking iconic the one where they're all delirious and high as hell or whatever they're talking about she's like I, I, I would be a whale I love whales that's historic that's historic you could take that on tour and tour for comedy it would be brilliant have that be the opening oh, interlude at the renaissance store God. but with that fucking being said you're definitely gonna come Again, at some point, especially when the album comes out, when you go on it's, tour too, when you open up for the girls. It's so, it's Joey, Joe, Joe, <laughs> big Joe, Bad little Joe. Me. It's so good to meet you. It's so good to meet you too. <laughs> You're a friend. 
Oh, You're a friend, a friend baby. To, I feel like Wendy, a friend to the show. <laughs> uh, friend to the show, visiting. Oh. <laughs> but no, genuinely, like, friend, friend, friend. Thank you. Well, now we have each other's number. <laughs> Let's carry. Let's shit. If you're not going to this show tonight, I have work tomorrow. My I'm boss is so kind of right down at the hall. I'm so confused. The continuing saga. We'll find out next time if you ended up making it to the Harry Styles show or not. Tell Tev I said hey too. But to close off, where can the dolls, the divas, the people with excellent taste find you and your talent? I mean, I'm. M Y K K I B L A N C O. Period. Stay close to music. It's a. It's gonna arguably be one of the best albums of the year, and I have never said that about anything I've released. I agree. Places are already so writing about it. If I have said that, and I've never said that before, I'm really not being arrogant. I think, I, I, I if anything, I'm gonna be like, damn, how do I, how do I top this album? <laughs> I think my I think my anxiety comes more from being like, okay, I, my next album really no. has to eat. <laughs> it's gonna eat regardless. Different eras, and it's a contemplative album. You know, it's not it's not necessarily a turn up album, but it's an album where it will come out. You will listen to it in the car. <laughs> Long dramatic rides on the train. I'll you be may listening cry. to Johnny like leaning on the window, thinking I'm in like a. Movie. I or thought something. you saw me. I thought you saw me. Do you see me? Do you see me? I mean, how? Steps already I is kind myself. of like my morning like song when I'm on the train. And I fucking M and E K, who we did even mention, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Ugh, M and E K, I'm uh, modern I'm day genius. I'm breathing. Mike, but my doll. Okay. Thank you. I. Okay, the journey of Vicky Blanco, the saga continues. The saga continues. I and now I think I do have to go. <laughs> no, same. My sister is like, you have to take me to Penn Station. I love you, doll. It was such a Thank pleasure. You.